Lord that you ought to put your hands together and give God a hand to praise all over this building. Because he is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. If you would just look at somebody and just sit next to you and tell them, I love the Lord. Now look at them again and tell them, good news is, I love you too. Did they say it back? Did they say it back? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Well, good morning, Evergreen. Good morning. Good morning. It is a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, and for his grace. There are a couple of things that I want to, um, to bring to your attention uh, on this morning. Uh, concerning, first of all, giving. Somebody shout, giving! Yeah. All right, all right. We thank God for our um, uh, for our finance team uh, and those who have accompanied uh, with making our giving easier. Amen. Because everybody has a cell phone, and sometimes you don't get a chance to stop by the ATM, and sometimes you sick of paying for checks to write all the time. Well, if that's you, amen, we have what is called a QR code. Is that right? QR code. Is that right, sister? Yeah. Amen. amen. All right, we have a QR code. And what that is, for those of you who have the PayPal app uh, on your phone, you can simply scan this code. Uh, it'll take you right to our giving. Uh, <clears throat> What's that? Go on now. <laughs> Amen. It'll take you right to uh, uh, to our giving site. Uh, and so if you don't want to write a check, if you don't have any cash, but you got some money in the bank. Amen. 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 And you want to give this way, you can simply scan this QR code. Uh, we will soon have them kind of posted around the church and maybe on the back of pews. But scan this QR code. It'll take you directly where you need to go. And bam. You have been a blessing unto the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. I give it up for our finance team. Amen. Amen. And for those who have helped along the way. Amen. Thank you all so much, Brother Earl, for even uh, receiving that idea. Amen. Uh, Brother Malcolm, I thank you for helping put that together and a host of others. And uh, we're coming up with some other ways to give uh, because everybody may not have PayPal. So there will be some other ways to give that you'll see coming out in the near future. Uh, we're just trying to make it easy. Amen? Amen? All right, all right, all right. Somebody say Easter fun day. Easter fun day. Say Easter fun day. Easter fun day. All right. Uh, for our Easter fun day, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> got some shirts together, uh, not only for our Easter fun day, but... Uh, so that you can sort of advertise who you are and where you go to church. Amen? Amen. Uh, now, I am under the uh, awareness that there were some shirts that were previously ordered. I do understand. But if you would like one of our uh, new shirts uh, that have been ordered, <clears throat> Sister Carolyn and I think Sister Tamika uh, kind of helped put together. Uh, it had the church logo uh, on the front of the shirt. And on the back of the shirt, it deals with our mission statement, which has been this month's series. Uh, it says, illuminating our God, uh, illustrating God's word, impacting our community because our life depends on it. Um, if you would like one of these shirts, uh, Sister Carolyn uh, will take your order. Uh, I think if we're trying to get them in by the Easter fun day, uh, ASAP is the deadline. <laughs> amen, amen. So uh, please see Sister Carolyn. You can also see the uh, see the newsletter. Uh, there's an announcement in there uh, on how you can go ahead and pay for your shirt. But listen, if you can get to Sister Carolyn today when church is over, stop by, get your shirt ordered so that we can look nice. Amen. 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 Green and gold. And I can't that's fancy right there a little bit. Y'all fancy around here at Evergreen Christian Community Church. Well, listen, it's giving time, amen? amen. It's giving time, amen? amen? Amen. You can scan that QR code if you want to, but if not, uh, get your tithe. 
and your offering in your hand. Get it in your hand. And when you have it in your hand, if you would, go ahead on and stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Amen. Stand to your feet. And hold that gift in the air. Hold that gift in the air. Amen. Some of y'all used to go to another place called with a cedar. It ain't the church. Uh, and they said, wave oh, your oh. hands in the air. Wave your hands in the air. Wave your hands in the air. Wave your hands in the air. Wave like you just don't care. <laughs> Amen. Well, take that gift and hold it in the air and say, Lord, I'm grateful for my tithe and for my offering. Say, I give it unto you, knowing that when I give it, you'll give it back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Somebody shout, running over. Follow the ushers around as the choir leads us in a song and it's getting
your hands and give God a worship all over the day. Hallelujah. 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 That's a good place to just tell God, I love you, I love you, I worship you. I adore you. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the honor. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the glory.
sometimes you just got to give people a moment because, because the week gets hectic sometimes. And, and sometimes as children of God, we can't seem to find a moment to give God glory. Because the cares of the world are on us so much. But sometimes when you get in the house of the Lord, you just need to take a moment. And just tell God thank you. Without being rushed, without worrying about cares, without worrying about burdens. Just need to take a moment to tell God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for this day for allowing us to come into this presence. God, just deliver this word. This word has nothing to do with me. But God is all about you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. God, forgive us of our sins blot out our transgressions. And God, we declare that when we leave this place, we'll leave here better than we were when we came. In Jesus' name we pray. And in the heart said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Aren't you glad that you are part of a body of believers that don't mind worshiping and praising the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. But listen, we do give honor and reverence to the Almighty God who is the maker and creator of all things. And for everybody that's here on this morning, amen. We thank God uh, for my wife uh, being here with us on this morning. Amen. And to all of Evergreen. Listen, grab your Bibles and go with us to the book of Philippians. Philippians uh, chapter number 3. And we're going to look at verse 13 and verse number 14. Philippians 3, amen, verse 13, verse 14. Of course, uh, I'll be reading from the Amplified Version uh, of the Bible, amen. And we're going to conclude this dynamic series that the Lord has allowed us Amen. To preach and teach from all of this week. Amen. Uh, I mean, all of this month. I uh, mean, uh, being that's who we are. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and verse 14. If you have it, if you would, somebody shout glory. Glory. The Bible says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have already made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on, yeah, toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want you to look at somebody this morning before you take your seat and tell them, say, neighbor, neighbor. We're, giving God we're giving God our best. Our best. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, if you would, make that personal this morning. Somebody shout, I'm giving God, I'm giving God my, best. my best. Hallelujah. Giving God our best. My brothers and sisters, as we have uh, perused through our mission statement here at uh, Elf Green Christian Community Church, the Lord has allowed us to take this mission statement, which is to become a beacon of light and hope and connect people with God through authentic relationships and service to our local communities and beyond 
But today, we want to look at the last portion of the mission statement. The last portion of the mission statement says that we do it because our lives depend on it. Amen. And what I have found out, my brothers and sisters of Evergreen Christian Community Church, is that when you do something for God, and when you do it with the energy that your life is on the line, uh -huh. it puts you in a position to where you give God your best. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, when, you, when you're working for God and, and when you are working in ministry and when you are working on a task, we, we have found that, that, that if we're going to give something to God, we all not have to do nothing. Y'all going to say amen at any point. We, we ought to not have a, a quarter or give God a portion of, of, of who we are, what we have to give. But, but instead, we must give God our best. And the basic mindset that you should have when giving God your best is you ought to do it like your life is dependent on it. Right. Oh, yes, whether it's cooking in the kitchen, whether it's helping in the parking lot, whether it's singing in the choir, whether it's receiving the offering on something, whether it's dealing with the children, whether it's preaching in the pulpit, whether it's here on Sunday or Wednesday or any other day, evergreen, whatever we do, we're going to give God our best. I need somebody to just say, I'm giving God, I'm giving God my, best. my best. Yes. My brothers and sisters, in order for us to be most effective in all aspects of this mission, there is a certain mindset that we must adopt. And it is not, watch this, it is not a mindset that a lot of church folk have. And that is that I just go do it because they ask me to. <laughs> Y'all can say amen this morning. I'ma just do it because Cousin Sally asked me to go do it. Well, I really wouldn't do it if my mama didn't ask me. Oh. Keep looking straight ahead. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to your neighbor. Well, I, I'ma just go do it because my children is a part. Oh, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to somebody else. We should not function in that particular mindset, but we should function within the mindset that I'm going to do it because God has called me to do it, and if God has called me to do it because he gave me his best, yeah. Yeah. I owe him my best. Yeah. He didn't have to do Jesus on Calvary. He gave you his only begotten son. And so if you are going to give to him, you owe him. Somebody shout, I owe God. My bed. Y'all, y'all, somebody in the back was looking upside the wall when I, when I said that somebody shout, I owe God. My bed. Matter of fact, you got my permission. Shake your hand at your neighbor this morning. Shake your finger at him and tell him, say, neighbor, neighbor. you owe God. You owe God. to Bickham, you don't owe it to anybody else, but you owe God. Yeah. Yeah. Move on in just a minute, but I'm trying to let that point sink in to somebody. You owe God your best. Yeah. Yeah. The Apostle Paul, whom we are illuminating in the text on this morning, uh, he is one that was definitely dedicated to giving God his best. Yeah. But when we look at the text, the Apostle Paul, he gives us insight into his life, which allows us to see some decisions that he had to make within himself prior to giving God his best. Because if the truth be told, all of us are human, 
All of us are emotional, and sometimes we just don't feel like it. Sometimes when you come to church, you just don't feel like it. Sometimes when you get to work, you got to get you some coffee. You got to get a honey bun. You got to read your scripture. You got to walk around. You got to go in the bathroom and sit down and watch your face. Somebody just say, sometimes I just don't feel like it. I know y'all think I'm a ball of energy, but sometimes I gotta sit in the car and get myself together. <laughs> Somebody shout, sometimes I just don't feel like it. Oh, but that ain't the end of the world. Talk to us, Paul, here this morning. Because just because you don't feel like it does not mean you still don't owe God your bed. Amen. The Apostle Paul talks to us in the text this morning. My brothers and sisters, listen. Paul said that there is a way that I have to function in order to get myself ready to give my best to God. Number one, number one, write these down because you're going to need them before tomorrow because something don't get in your way of giving God your best. <laughs> Number one, if you're going to give God your best, number one, you must dismiss the distractions. Somebody shall dismiss the distraction. Watch this. Paul makes it plain here in the text. My brothers and sisters, Paul says, My brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have already made it. He said, But this one thing that I do, number one, he says, Forgetting those things which are behind me. Somebody shall dismiss the distraction. My brothers and sisters, the word beginning here in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 basically means dismissing from the mind or paying no attention to. I'm going to say that again so I can help somebody. This word uh, forgetting basically means dismissing from the mind or paying no attention to. Can I take it a step further? Paul says here in the text that I am forgetting those things which are behind me. The word forget in this connotation of Philippians 3 and 13 does not mean that I don't remember. But more so it means that I ain't got time to dwell on it. Let me help y'all right quick, my brothers and sisters. There are some things that happen to you in life that you may not never totally forget about. Uh -huh. I'll give you just a minute to think about some things and some folk that did you a bad way. Yeah. And it's just hard to forget about it. Paul says that you are going to remember those things. Uh -huh. He says, but because I'm giving God my best, I don't have time to dwell on it. That's right. In other words, every now and then, I remember how you did me. Every now and then, I remember what you said to me. Every now and then, I remember how I was counting on you, but you didn't show up. Yeah, now and then I remember that we were trying to get it done, but you got MIA. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all okay. ain't gonna help me preach this morning. But Paul said, because I'm giving God my best, I don't have time to dwell on it. Somebody shout, don't dwell on it. You remember the bad relationship. But because you believe in God for that studge you've been praying for. Yeah. You ain't got time to dwell on him or her. How you gonna appreciate Santa Sue when you can't get over Jenny May? 
Y'all gonna have me preach here this morning. How we gonna be the best evergreen Christian community church if we gonna keep dwelling on evergreen? Yeah, yeah. Somebody shout, we can't dwell on it. We can't. You have got to dismiss. The distraction of what Paul spoke of forgetting the things which were behind me. He was not speaking, watch this, he was not speaking of anybody else's past, but he was speaking of his own past. Yeah. Can I help y'all a step further in this dismissing the distractions? And I'm going on to point number two. The reason why some of us can't dismiss our own distractions is because we always got our nose in somebody else's distraction. We can't get over our own mess because we always in somebody else's mess. Paul said, I got enough distractions of my own to deal with. I got enough problems of my own I got enough mess of my own to deal with. I'm trying to raise my own children. I'm trying to pay my own bills. I'm trying to serve the law for myself. But excuse me if I don't have time for your distraction because I'm trying to handle my own distraction. Somebody shout, forget about it. Somebody else's stuff. Yeah. 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 How you gonna give God your best? Yeah. Yeah. And every time you turn around, you texting about somebody else's best. Yeah. Yeah. How you gonna deal with your own problems? How you gonna give God your own best when you giving time to everybody else's mess? Yeah. Somebody shout dismiss, dismiss. the distraction. Yeah. Not only my brothers and sisters, must we dismiss the distractions. I told you come on with me this morning because I ain't going to dwell alone. If you're going to give God your best, number two, we must fix our faces. Say that. Okay. Yeah, I got a moment for me to talk about how the importance of your face. Look, look, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Fix your face. Somebody else, you're looking funny. <laughs> Tell them I need you to fix your face. <laughs> I ain't gonna take about five minutes and I'm gonna be done with this point right here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but Paul says here in the text, he said, Not only am I forgetting those things which are behind me, he said, But I'm reaching for those things that are ahead of me. Now, watch this. This, this, this fix in your face uh, basically comes more deeply from the term of fix. Which means, watch this. There is no way that I can adequately fix and reach in the right direction if my face is in one place, but my hand is in another. Sometimes a lot of us are focused on other stuff, but trying to reach to God to get something else. I'll tell your neighbor, you gotta fix your face. You gotta fix. You, you, you gotta fix your face. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because there is no way that your face can be fixed over here, but your hand is over here. If your face ain't in the right fix, then your fix ain't gonna get fixed from the Lord. Somebody shout, I gotta fix my face. Not only does the term uh, fix come from the term of fix, which means in the right position, but it also means in the right condition. See, sometimes we ain't in the right position with our face, and sometimes our face ain't in the right condition. You can't walk up to nobody asking them, do you love the Lord when you look like you hate everybody you see? Swallowing a box of crab apples, top with lemon juice on the top of them. Touch your neighbor and tell them, fix your face. Oh, come 
the church, they need to know the Lord. And the only thing they know is about your mess and your problem. And you looking all ugly and looking upside somebody's head. When they come to church, you just... <laughs> Secondly, I'm re- 
preaching to those things which are before me. All right, come on. But uh, lastly, he says here in the text that I have made up in my mind that I must press toward the mark. Ain't God all right? And I've come to tell somebody that if you're going to give God your best, Sometimes it's going to take you pressing your way anyhow. Ain't God all right? And I need to tell somebody in here that even if you have to press your way, there is a pressing. There is a pressing in your pressing. This morning, Evergreen, as I go to my seat this morning, tell somebody, tell them, say, neighbor, there is a blessing in your place. Ain't God all right? I know you may not feel like it.
sink and every head bow. For those who pray the prayer, I'm going to pray with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would hear the prayers that were prayed. And God, not only hear them, but answer them. Because God, you have all power in your hands. Matter of fact, you gave it to your son when he rose on the third day morning. So the power that's over sickness, I declare be healed. Power that's over depression, I declare be healed. Oppression, I declare be healed. Families are healed. Jobs come. Money is made better. Yes, God, joy is given back. Peace is given back. Love is given back. Hope is given back. God, we declare all this in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Of all that we can ask and think according to the power that working within us. Before we leave, I need you to open up your eyes. And I want you to declare this with me this morning. Lord, Lord no matter how hard it gets, I will give you my best. In Jesus' name. Listen, there's a little meeting. There's a little meeting that we're going to have in the back. If you receive the text message from Sister and throughout the week about the Easter fun day, I want us to meet in the kitchen. It won't take but just a minute. So if you would, just bow to the kitchen. Uh, let's have this meeting and get done. Hug them and people of you like hugging, just fist bump them and tell them we're going to give God our best. Amen. Amen.